Good. Uh, I'm Shane with SH9. Um, SH9 Outdoor Shop on Instagram and Facebook. And this is, uh, this is what I do. I'm a self-taught knife maker. I've been at it for seven years. Um, I've got a bunch of different designs. I like big, heavy bladed stuff, uh, both hatchets and blades. Um, all of my spine thicknesses range quarter inch to maybe three sixteenths is Love probably it. the smallest stuff that I do. And I started with the big stuff, the kukris, the hatchets. Um, they don't move. They're fun to play with, but most people don't want to buy them. Uh, okay. So I started making the smaller everyday carry stuff. Yes. Like my Dutch. Um, I started forging this year. Okay. 99% um, of my forging is integral handle. Okay. Because I like the look, and I figure if I'm going to hit a piece of steel with and a hammer. something different, you know? Well, and if I'm going to hit a piece of steel with a hammer, I want it to look like I hit it with a hammer when I'm done with it, when okay. I sell it. Uh, there's a ton of guys, and it's their take to hammer a piece of steel and then polish it to the point where it looks like it was factory made. I personally don't understand that. If you're going to hit it with a hammer, it should look like it was hit with a hammer. Got like I said, way. my opinion. And uh, so all of my forged stuff will have forged marks. I do do handles on some of my forged I stuff. That, yep. But I do leave the forging marks I mean, in them. I love it. Thanks. I love it. Yeah, I appreciate that. It, it, I mean, it's a medieval look. Yep. And but I'm it's an, functional. I'm an industrial person. I call them. Uh, I call them functionally attractive finishes. Um, I tell you, just just for as me personally, because I love kitchen knives. Uh huh. Like this K tip right here is just gorgeous. Oh, you like that from a kitchen knife standpoint, really? So we there's a knife called a bunka or a karitsuke. Never heard and of it. And so those are we we refer to the end of it as a K tip. Okay. And so having that pointed, whenever you're chopping up onions and shallots and things like that, a lot of times people don't get to the back. Okay. And that tip just goes a little sneakily, just goes a, a little, little bit further, deeper. You know, I got you. Able to do Makes it. perfect sense. And this is this over here. This is, you know, yeah, so much a chef knife that kind of almost goes into a K tip. It's like a soft. So K -tip. I blended uh, my first kitchen knife was a French chef style. Uh, it's for a friend of mine that's a chef in Switzerland. And uh, I realize there's a market. Most people use a kitchen knife every day. Yes. Most people don't use an everyday carry every day. Right. So I started doing kitchen knives, and I like the Japanese spine shape, so it's yes. based off of the Santoku. Yes. But instead of being super flat for a chop cut, I've kind of blended that the edge geometry and, and a of a French. People, a lot of people have that they have that variation, whether it's a right. heavy belly, mm -hmm. shallow belly, you know. Right. So I've kind of blended. I've got a nice flat for right around half. So it'll rock to a stop if you're rock cutting, or you can chop with it. And really heavy spines, again, 3 16 spine. So I put all of my kitchen knives in a Kydex sheath for two reasons. One, because it won't fit in a kitchen in most blocks. And two, now it's a travelable knife. Well, I have a, I have a video on knife storage mm -hmm. and having something to cover the edge so when your child reaches into a drawer, they right, have right. Well. Yep. It's very good to have that. Yeah, it's, um, so I do want to ask you about the grind on that, if you'll hold that up again. Okay, absolutely. So is so I see a secondary bevel, right? So it's like right. it's like a saber or a scandy grind to here. Yeah, it's, it, I, I flat grind it to about one thou. Well, actually with the kitchen knives, and, and these are S35, so they come out of, they go in the oil at 2,000 degrees. So I leave these probably between two and 3,000, so they're a little thick. And then I finish grind them after the heat treat. I do 90% of my grinding pre-heat treat. Okay. If I grind these too thin, when I take them out of the oil, I got a waffle fry cutter. Okay. And I learned that lesson accidentally. Again, self-taught, I learned that lesson. Oops, I just ruined that knife. So I learned that I, gotta, I have to leave my kitchen stock a little bit thicker before I heat treat. And so then I finish them off. And I, it's, for as heavy as it is, it's actually got a fairly thin profile when I finish it. Okay. So. And uh, when I do my forged knives, I've got a couple back there as well. Uh, you. that are forged. Let me handle oh, that. that uh, so when I forge, I do the same thing. I still chase that, and this is more of a French, you know, a little bit of radius on the front and mostly flat, Okay. but uh, also integral handle, yep. and it sits in the hand nice. It's nose heavy. But so I it's, do like this, um, this finger rest that kind of goes in there. Mm -hmm. There's a certain Japanese uh, blacksmiths that do that. Right. It's always caught my eye, something I actually enjoy. I like it from a functional standpoint. It's hard to get down on your own blade. Yes. From, from a cutting standpoint, I radius my spines. So most people are going to use a kitchen knife with a pinch grip. Yep. 
And when you pinch grip this, it balances real nice. It's real nose heavy from the handle, but it's heavy enough to be between a prep knife and a cleaver. Okay. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. And I've uh, the one that we just the one we were just looking at. I've actually processed firewood with it and then used it to cook food. Okay. So they're durable. And I said this these go down to a variety of sizes. So it's big. a it's a steak knife set with a prep knife with oh, a display awesome. rack was Absolutely. the intent. What is the price point that we're looking at? For so a, for the full set, seventeen twenty nine okay. for my steak knife for sets. An individual knife. Uh, I run seven twenty nine for a Santoku with a sheath seven seventy nine. Okay. And so what else we got going here? We got neck knives. What is it? Uh, a little bit of everything. When I forge, I forge. Uh, I try to give myself a little bit of freedom. I started with stock removal. Okay. And my stock removal is very repetitive. Okay. So I when I started forging, I don't chase a shape to start. I start beating on a piece of steel when it starts looking at it looking like a knife, I finish it as it looks. There you so, go. Uh, so if you want something truly original. Use this as an example. This was a piece of drop from 1095 stock removal. Okay. When I started hammering on it, that's the shape that presented. Kind of an axe-ish middle. You know, yeah. yeah. It's just kind of what you said earlier, a little medieval look. Yep. I but, love it. I mean, but clean and know, integral handle, no weak points. I will say that you know I filmed a lot of stuff this weekend, and nothing looks like this. Well, I appreciate that. Absolutely. That's that was kind of the goal. Everybody else, everybody's doing the same thing edge geometry wise. The difference in everybody in here is handle and spine profile. It's I the artistic that, side of it. I would say that I've definitely seen a little bit more um, hollow grind. Right. On some of this stuff. I have not done. I've done very little hollow grind. Uh, just, just drop that. This was my first sword, okay. uh, made as a retirement piece okay. for a good friend of mine, okay. and that's my biggest hollow grind to date. Absolutely, <laughs> it's a hollow grind twice on each side. Yeah. There you go. When you, if they ever shoot Clash of the Titans again. Yeah, perfect, right? To come to. Yeah, full leather wrap, but a full tang. So the whole the whole tang is forged. And that's the first time I saw material on any of them. Other ones, uh, the other stuff is. What is this made out of versus so, that? That's a, actually a wrap. So this is actually a leather wrap. So I do the exact same scalloping in the handle. Okay. I've got a quarter inch piece of leather on either side glued to, to give it girth. And then I wrap it with epoxy so it can't move. Okay. So when you grip it, it grips just like any of the rest of my knives. Okay. Oh, you kept it, I get it. It kept the texture. Right. The way being Correct. And then, so what do we have adhering to these? Uh, so Bowie. I started with this as a Bowie. Again, like the big stuff, people like to handle it, but it's not viable, really. It's not useful for most people. So I scaled my Bowie down to what I call a compact Bowie with a, I think it's a sixth and an eighth inch blade. Okay. I removed the, uh, the rear guard or the, I like it. the spine yeah. side guard so that you can actually use it. I increase the belly just a little bit, so it's kind of a general outdoor utility knife. I, I you can you can baton it. I've got uh, my my false edge comes out short enough so that it's still batonable, so okay. it'll do everything in the outdoors. And, and the handle is made with this handle is burlap micarta or burlap G10. It's from a company out of uh, uh, they're in Massachusetts. Current Composites. Okay. They do this burlap in black, natural red. I really like the way the burlap looks. It's a phenolic resin, but it's processed the exact same way as G10. So it's burlap as the fiber, they dye it, they put a phenolic resin in it, and then they autoclave it. So under heat and pressure, it's the same durability and density as any G10. I just like the way it patterns, it looks nice to me. And then what do we have here that's a little bit different for the handle? Uh, so this is Kiernite. Uh, which Absolutely. is uh, I've already so you've I've already got, talked I've to Kieran Knight. Yeah. So uh, when I first started doing fixed handles, I started with Kieran Knight because okay. it, it it looks really nice with very little work. Uh, it's That's an, what they're telling me. The machining, it, everything yep. is just super. It's easy. really easy to work with. They do custom. Uh, they do custom designs. Yes. And they've got this. So this is their Patriot. Uh, their their Patriot pattern, so red, white, and blue. Yep. And I really like the way it polishes out. That blue is really eye catching. So even though you didn't say it, guys, this this is an American made product. Oh yeah, everything here is uh, made in New Mexico. I'm just outside of Albuquerque. Okay. And uh, I'm not so in love with myself. I'll make anything that I make custom. To any, I'll customize it to any degree. I don't care. Well, I'm a kitchen knife guy, and I look over here, and what brought me to the table was I do see. The kitchen knife. You know, I right. see that the, the back choil is just 
a little more rounded here and there, but I mean, I see the outdoorsman. I get everything. I get that industrial, medieval, it's, it's so much. And I, I've been to a lot of booths, and I haven't seen anything look like this. Well, sweet. I've heard that a lot today, but I haven't managed to sell all of it. So. Well, people have to come to appreciate. All right, fair enough. It's uh, So, sh9.com? everything's for sale everything here that's not currently on the website will be on the website in the next three weeks so it'll all be available this was definitely not a dull moment we appreciate i appreciate it thanks for your time I look forward to seeing you next year likewise